Good morning and welcome to another Leaf Organics CBD podcast. Um, we have the wonderful Becky on today and she is a coach. Now, I always describe Becky as the person coach. She coaches you and then it helps everything else fall into place. I've got a lot of time for Becky. She's no nonsense, straight talking. Um, would you like to please introduce yourself, please, Becky? Oh, thanks, Michelle. Yeah, so my business is Westfield Coaching. And as you quite rightly said, I work with small business owners, but I work with the person behind the business rather than the business themselves. But the wonderful thing is once we start putting boundaries in and start saying no, uh, on a personal level, it really does empower people to put them in in all areas, including their business, um, to find a wonderful balance. Mm -hmm. You're like, I think I described you once like the Maria Kondo of your life. You kind of just sort it all out, don't you? Yeah. Do you know what? Somebody asked me, he said, how can you describe it? And I'm a visual person, as you know. And uh, and I said, we all have those shit drawers, don't we? You know, those drawers where your everything drawer. gets thrown into. Yeah. Everything's in there. And what I do is people come to me with the drawer mm -hmm. and they tip it all out on my table. And we just go, right, let's see what we're keeping. Let's see what we're getting rid of. And let's see what is actually useful in our in our lives today. And we sort them all out yeah. in little in little piles. Yeah. Well, I know we've had many a chat, haven't we? And we do our best. I think we do our best too, Maggie, when we're walking our, our doggies. Oh, yeah, so. I know. And I, th I think that's that's the thing. It's, it's talking through things. And you've, you've given me some real, I think sometimes you can't see stuff. It's like the old, you know, the wood for the trees, isn't it? You can't yeah, see it. And then yeah. you, I think we had a discussion about time management at the very start of my business. Mm. Um, and you just went, why have you not got a diary that you can see a visual diary? And I went, oh my God, genius. But sometimes you need somebody away from it. And that's why you come yeah. into play, isn't it, really? Yeah, and that's it. It's that degree of separation. You know, that's why it's always helpful. It doesn't matter whether it's with your business or whether it's in personal relationships. It's like you can't, well, you probably do coach your sons, but you can't coach your sons because they're just you're just too close to, mm -hmm. to be there. Sorry about that. Turn my phone off. Yeah, um, but it's like in relationships as well. You'll never find that a woman, uh, a man will listen to their partner or a, a woman will listen to their partner. You need that degree of separation, you know. And sometimes it is just because you're not attached to it emotionally yeah. Yeah. that it all makes sense. You're quite right about that. My husband is a brilliant salesperson. He's absolutely fantastic. Well, I'll take advice from him. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. How very dare you. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me Becky you've got a fabulous story of how you got into this because I always think it's like with me in my business with CBD I didn't just wake up one morning and go oh, do you know what I'm going to sell CBD I kind of fell into it so yeah. what's your story how did you how did you get to where you are today okay so I mean the easiest way to say it was I was mentally ill I was mentally ill that's it you know I had a breakdown at around about eight years ago um I was eight years sober so I always equate it to to the way it was then and I literally had stopped looking after myself not just in in absolutely every area I was really successful at work I was a great tutor you know in further education I loved the job but I just lost sight of everything really um and I kept and basically it got to the point where I had to leave there was no choice I had to leave that profession because I just wasn't well um and it's not a case of not being good at what I was doing it was just I just wasn't well I just I remember sitting there in a room one day and they said right all the marks that you've got for your offset blah 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 we're gonna redo it and in my head my head just went I'm not and it was almost like a resignation. Um, anyway, I got signed off. I had a wonderful coach and she was my manager within the college. And she said to me, Becky, go to your doctor. That's all she said. Go to your doctor. Mm -hmm. So I went to my doctor. You know, I, did, I, I was good then. I did as I was told. And, um, and it was a case of I had to be signed off because I, I really couldn't see what to do. I couldn't. It was madness because I was so organized and logical and methodical in in teaching that I just couldn't see a way through um and one of my friends within um the fellowship as you know I'm in uh, Alcoholics Anonymous which I'll just blow my anonymity <laughs> out um one of my friends had gone to group coaching and 
he had just he kept talking about how he felt better how he felt his life had transformed and I thought I want a bit of this I want a bit of this so I went to this group coaching with my wonderful uh, life coach Hannah and it did exactly what he said it would do it transformed my life I remember sitting there feeling bereft because I've been a teacher for 14 years and I didn't know what else I would do and the way that the way it worked was we would just do subjects every week. So it was a 12 week course. We would just look at subjects on, on within life, in, within life coaching on a week by week basis. And it almost felt as if I was piecing my life together mm. bit by bit. So over the years, since my mum had died 15 years ago, I'd pieced or I'd tried these things. I'd done a bit of counselling, level two, level three, I'd done solution brief therapy. But it never really dipped my toe in it mm -hmm. properly and really launched it. And I remember during the time, the time out between uh, teaching and teaching, I had a little bit of a gap where I worked as a receptionist just purely for my well-being, my mm -hmm. mental health, just to recover. And I, and I love the, the phrase at the minute that I am still in active recovery from this uh, mental ill health, mm -hmm. you know, but it is active recovery and it's so positive. But when I was there... I read a book called The Big Magic by Liz Gilbert, and it talks about um, an idea. If an idea comes to you, unless you nurture it and, and help it grow, it will go on to somebody else. And I can only say that when I was reading that book, I thought, yes, yeah, I had this idea when I was doing my counselling. I had this idea when I did my solution focus brief therapy. I'd done the, the sessions with Hannah and then I thought, you know what, it's now or never. So I got made redundant from this job and I had a little pot of money and I thought it is now or never. And I just thought, right, sign up, get your coaching qualifications and literally make a go of it. So it's, it's almost like the old, you have to wait till you were ready. It's obviously always been bubbling away in the background yeah. to help people. But it almost seems to me like when you were before you you decided to make that change it's almost like and I I know you as a person it sounds like you were probably putting everybody else before you as well whereas now it's your time to put yourself yeah. first when it's the old thing isn't it that you don't look after yourself you can't look after anybody else can you yeah. Exactly. So. And I think when I was teaching, I certainly did that. But when I started on my personal development journey, I stopped doing it literally oh. within weeks. Yeah. So I would say I've not put, <laughs> it sounds awful, this, no. but I'm going to say it anyway, I've not put other people before myself yeah. for a good seven years. I have to admit that. Because... Not, I don't think that's, there's anything wrong in that because no. like we say, if you can't look after yourself, how can you then teach other people to look after them? and yeah. be there for them unless you're putting yourself first yeah exactly and you know what I have to live what I practice I have to you know whatever I help other people with I have to for me I have to model the same behavior I have to model what I'm talking about you know so I have to model the fact that I don't run around ragged after everybody I have to model the fact that I look after my mental well-being as a priority you know and even with my sobriety my mental sobriety my emotional sobriety is that will lead me back to drinking if I don't look after it. Yeah. So it's an absolute priority in all areas. And it's, it's funny that because I always say to people that um, I'm not responsible for other people's happiness. I can yeah. be a good friend, a good wife, a good mum, but I am not ultimately responsible for their happiness. You and you alone are responsible for your own happiness. Yeah. And, and how you, empowering is that? Yeah. You know, just to say to somebody, this isn't my job, mate, it's yeah. yours. <laughs> and also, you know... It, People need to take responsibility when they have messed up and gone, do you know what? I said that wrong. I did that wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. My other yeah. side of that is if, if, if you genuinely are re remorseful for saying something in the wrong way, upsetting something or doing it, because we don't get it right. I, and I do no. think people do things with the best of intentions. It just gets a bit messed up in the communication aspect, whether yeah. it's been received wrong or delivered wrong. And that's yeah. where, to me, things go wrong. But if you're prepared to go, do you know what? I got that wrong. I said it wrong. I did it wrong. You should only have to apologise once. This is yeah. where my other side of it comes in. Whereas if yeah. you're a person who keeps making that person say sorry again, say sorry to you, that's got the problem, not them. 
so and again that's down to the communication isn't it and yeah and it's also knowing yourself because some people don't know that they make people they don't make people feel but they some people don't know how their behavior affects other people Mm -hmm. and that's the god's honest truth and i always say to people who i'm either working with in my personal development courses or one-to-ones or my my business westfield warriors i always say to people um that we are responsible only for ourselves absolutely only for ourselves you know and i always say as well is once we start on that track of personal development it doesn't matter whether you've got loads of self-help books which i've got loads of or whether it's just a personal thing to really look at yourself once you're awake you can't go back to sleep Mm -hmm. anthony de mello says that you know most people what he says is most people walk around asleep Whereas when, when, and if you choose to wake up and look after yourself and that self-awareness, you can't go back to sleep. It's yeah. a wonderful journey. It's interesting you saying that because you, you know me, I struggle with my own mental health for 15 years and it is a roller coaster. Some, you know, majority yeah. of the time it's fine, but you know, I can have crashes and that's always when I don't put my myself first. Yeah, And yeah. it's very difficult to walk the walk and talk the talk. And, yeah. you know, um, you know it, it, it is it's vitally important and I do put one thing I put first is my sleep my sleep is my yeah, my yeah. thing and I guard it with 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 a you know I don't know what the correct analogy is I guard it with my, literally well it is <laughs> yeah. I don't get enough like last night my husband had had a, a glass of red wine and when he has a glass of red wine he snores all night doesn't matter yeah. whether he has one glass or a pint of it he <laughs> snores all night so I am absolutely exhausted today not because he had literally had one glass of wine with his tea. Yeah. But tonight, I, I've yeah. already planned in my head early night because I need to catch up on my sleep and I don't give a, a hoot what's yeah. going on. I'm going to bed at eight o'clock tonight because yeah, that's how I yeah. recover. Yeah. And I should have had a training session today, but no, I'm, I'm putting that. And it's learning to explain, accept that things do go wrong from time to time, but knowing that you've got a strategy there that you can pull back on, which is yeah. not a destructive strategy as well, isn't it? Exactly. And I think that's, you know, that's what I can help people with is put in a plan. Like you say, you know, if the sleep is massively important Mm -hmm. for me, if I don't sleep well, it, it, it's like dominoes. It affects my behavior. It affects my thoughts. I get oversensitive. I think everyone's talking about me, you know, all of these usual things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an absolute spiral. So, you know, things like that is kind of like, like you get a plan in place that if if something goes wrong or something doesn't go to plan which it does yeah you know. every day every yeah. day then just sort of like go right okay how can and I think what you said is how can I get this back into yeah. my control yeah. and nobody else can do it we can call them all the names under some because of that, that glass of red wine but the fact of it is you know yes yeah, so, you know you what and he was entirely had a lovely evening he slept like a rock last night i'm not ever gonna <laughs> slept. I'm never gonna begrudge him having a good night's sleep and that's the thing and this is what i talk about you know he didn't do it on purpose it's one of those things they love it isn't it so yeah get but, a spare bedroom girl that's what i do <laughs> yeah yeah but to be fair i want to know i can't be bothered moving i'm not moving I'm not moving <laughs> nice and comfy and warm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i do love my bed but no yeah. i think it's 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 knowing knowing you your capabilities and also your limitations and yeah you know it is it's so important so one of the things I've put in place this year because January I mean January was the longest year ever this year yeah. wasn't it <laughs> bloody awful longest year. <laughs> oh it was bloody awful you know it was dark it was cold it was oh we're full of pandemic and it was just my head literally fell off because mm. I got engrossed in watching the news which I don't normally do yeah everything yeah. else in between and I then had to put things back in place and one of them was I was stretching myself far too thin and I was trying to be everything to everybody. And I always think about things that you've told me. So now my rule is I, I love my training and my training was trying to be shoehorned in yeah. to the tiny bit of time I had left, which was my time to basically eat my dinner and, and chill out. Yeah. So my downtime was getting less and I was getting basically burnout. Mm. So now four o'clock, my laptop goes off, woof, down. Yeah. Don't care. And a customer's now, I know that if a customer emails me, I had an email last night at Sunday afternoon about four o'clock, I thought, no. Sunday I'm not I'll answer it on Monday yeah. morning I answered it Monday morning they weren't bothered they probably just yeah. sat before I forget I must send that email yeah. 
they weren't sending it expecting a response they just needed to get it off their desk and it's taken me a long time to put that process into my head but you've helped me deal yeah. with things like that and it's that learning to say no in the expectations isn't it it is it is and I spoke to another lady over the weekend you know and she said you know what, what I want to concentrate on is for the next four weeks is put uh, my family first and I said okay so let's clear the decks of your diary and like and I would say to you Michelle never mind putting your laptop down at four o'clock I would say look get your training in your diary as your first priority yeah. and then do all your work around it because yeah. I know you I know that you love swinging from these <laughs> this rig <laughs> in your back garden I know that how important that is not only just for your physical health but your mental health as well and I'm I personally it's like me with my miracle morning people laugh at me I do not start work till 11 o'clock because that's my miracle morning I am shocking in the morning unlike you yeah. you know so I need at least three hours to wake up walk the dog eat well get myself ready and you know what I'm so much better yeah. for just allowing myself that time and likewise with you um, once you, if you had your clear yeah but if you had your clear diary and you go right my training's here 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 and here right and then you you see your full week and then you work you how how brilliant is that? Yeah. I mean, I wish I had mine on me. Just to have your da your training as your priority, yeah. like me with my mental health. Absolutely. And then all the rest of the work can can happen and it almost does. effortlessly. Yeah. And it does happen. I mean, how many times I always remember once years ago when it was my counsellor, I had um I've had CBT and psychotherapy, you know, I I had no yeah. I think therapy, oh I've just seen your lovely doggy come in. No, we'll talk Stella. about dogs in a minute. I mean they're <laughs> a therapy on their own, aren't they? So <laughs> it's it's kind of like I remember them uh, I forgot where I was going with uh, talking about my CBT. See, there you are. There, there, there is an executive moment. My brain's gone. <laughs> so you tell about, there, there's a perfect example of not enough yeah. sleep. My brain yeah. doesn't function enough. Um, and this is what I'm saying about CBD as well. CBD is not a miracle cure. It's as well as, isn't it? It's, and this yeah. is the thing, you know, your one-to-one -one training is not a miracle cure. It's part of the process and it's putting it all together. Yeah. But you've got to, to do these things. So um, I completely forgot what I was going to talk about with my therapy. Um <laughs> Can we talk about something else, Becky? <laughs> of course, of course we can. I got distracted. See that? Distracted by an animal. With Stella, didn't Black you? That was it. Gone. <laughs> Brain gone. Um, I can't even remember what it was. It was. It was about. Um, no, gone. No. Don't worry. Completely Don't gone. worry. It'll come back to you. <laughs> It'll come back to you. It really will. But you know what you were saying then? There isn't one cure fix all. There really isn't. You know, like you're saying, with with us, me and you. I know that our businesses run side by side. If someone suffers from anxiety, there is so much more. So if I think about all the people that I work with and I have in my wonderful network, you know, if you suffer from anxiety, your product's absolutely amazing. Takes the edge off. Then we'll go and do a bit of yoga with Orange yeah, Bloom with Helen. Absolutely. And then, you know, come to me. We'll do a bit of coaching. Yeah. set these actions actions in motion people might want to go and run so we go to somewhere else or we go to the gym or do you know it might just be having that relaxing massage just yeah. all for yourself yeah. so all these wonderful businesses that we're surrounded by you know we all work together yeah. to promote wellness yes. that's what it's all about yeah it, and it is and this is this is why I say my product is not instead of it's as well as it's as, as well, well as, as all yeah. of those amazing things for me I was doing all of those things and I felt like there was a missing piece of the puzzle. And for me, it was the last slot that needed to go in. Yeah. But I still have to keep working on all those other bits. For me, taking my CBD every day is, is just routine now. It's so ingrained yeah. in me. It's like you brush your teeth in the morning, you take your CBD. That's yeah. how I do it. But I have to work on the, I'm penciling my, my gym time, I'm penciling rest time. That is still a work yeah. in progress very yeah. much for me because I'm a workaholic. Yeah. And, and I think as well, people go into to business to that. I think that's where I was going with my, my thing about what is your goal? We've had these stories before where and discussions where we said, my goal will be completely different to somebody else's goal. Yeah. And yeah. a monetary goal for me isn't actually what my goal was, why I've set out to set my business up. It was yeah. to help people and have more time with my family. Yeah. And when I get customers telling me this has helped, I'm feeling better. That ticks my other box. When I'm having yeah. time with my family, it ticks the other box. The money comes last for me. Yeah, but because yeah. I'm getting all those other things in place, it comes naturally. It does. It does. 
but yeah, for other and clients, I, the be all and end all might be having lots of staff, having the best product on the market, earning a million pounds. Well, that's their goal, and yeah. that's why you should never judge. Well, exactly. And judge, well, what is it about? You know, it's one person's opinion against the other. You know, but the yeah. thing is, you know, I didn't go into business to make loads of money. I, I like I've just said, I was in poor mental health. And you know what? The thing was, I realised, look, this we only get one shot at this. We only get one shot at this. So why not work and enjoy what you're doing? Um, you know, of course, you know, we've all got to pay our bills, but at the same time, not to the detriment of your well-being. Absolutely. And that's what's important for me, working with small business owners, is saying to them, and when people say, I haven't got time to, to do something, or they haven't then there's a problem that's where we need to work together because we want to have this time every self-employed person man and woman wants to spend time with the family like you've just said you know they want to watch their grandchildren uh, grow up they want to be able to take holidays but if you're working non-stop and you've not got like you say you always say about these systems and these processes that make it easier if you haven't got those in place you are going to be working all the hours god sends burning out and really you might as well be working for somebody else while you're doing that yeah Yeah. and and i think that that's the thing it's it's i mean you know i love a system and procedure and that's why my first year of business i worked flat out because i'm set up all these systems and procedures and it paid off because in January when when it was the longest year ever I took about six weeks out one I wasn't well and I took six weeks out and my business carried on in fact turnover and profit were exactly the same as they were the month before so I've proven those and and it was a real wake-up call for me that I me moving my business forward was was the pressure I put on myself my actual business it was interesting we've got a good friend of ours um, Adam Payne who said to me Mm. now you've got a business because yeah. your business is functioning without you exactly and went, oh my god yes and it was this big wake-up call that yes yeah. yes I do want to keep moving my business forward because that's that's me I do you know I yeah. like to keep on top of things but it's 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 making sure that all those other things are in place that that I'm happy and my yeah. wellness is there but um so let's go back to sort of Westfield Warriors that I know because you have your group sessions and you have your one-to-one yeah. So if somebody's yeah. thinking, actually, I need to sort my life out. I need to sort my business out. I just need some guidance. What's the process and how do we get in touch with you, Becky? Uh, OK, so I do like a 15 minute call. But to be honest, what the best way of doing it is just picking up the phone, give me a call or messaging me on Facebook or LinkedIn, you know, and then we'll book a call in. The thing about coaching, you've got to have that kind of like rapport with the with the person you're going to be coaching but also with they, them with me as well, you know. So, and what I tend to do, if somebody's thinking about business, you know, if they're thinking about being part of something bigger, being part of a supportive community, then what I do is we get on a Zoom like this and I'll show them around Westfield Warriors and I'll show them the type of things that people are posting, the videos we do and the subjects that we cover Um, because it's a bit of coaching and mentoring, as you know, you know, and it's really led by the people in that group. So say, for example, people want to know more about, um, because Adam came and he spoke to us about LinkedIn or they might want to know about um, adaptive Ability. So we had a wonderful um, coach, a mentor of mine, Adam um, Alan Millsop, came and spoke about adaptability in April. And I show them around because of what I want people to walk into something with me is with a full picture. This is what it is. This is what happens. So because it can be quite nerve wracking getting together, if it's a one to one basis, it's literally let's have a quick call, see if I can help you, see the way that I work and if that's something that would work for you. And if it is, then we just book a session in and we just crack on it's as easy as that sounds you know and nobody's under any obligation usually most people uh come and have a one-to-one with me you know which is a deep dive a refocus session and then um they'll either sign up to do another six sessions with me or they just dip back in as and when they Mm -hmm. need it you know i think think that's it with coaching it's not just a one area that that you that i know that you don't just look at the business you look at the person the home life the finance and you go around because all of those have yeah. to be working together. Because if one of them's out of coach, it doesn't matter if the other five are, are brilliant. If that one's out, the rest of it yeah. will be out. And we've discussed this and it's making sure, and again, that those goals are aligned with what you want to achieve. And you've always helped me 
work all that that wheel out for want of a better yeah. word well it is it is it's called the wheel of life and a lot of coaches use it and, it, and, and people are shocked when I say to them listen work is only one spoke in that wheel yeah. And yet so many people think I've got to work, I've got to earn this amount of money. It's absolutely true. You do, but not to the detriment of yeah. the other seven areas in your well, life. We, we you were know? discussing this the other night, me and my husband, and I said, what would we do if we won the lottery? And we were talking mega bucks, you know, not just 50p. Yeah. Oh, great, I've yeah. got 50p, thanks. I've got three numbers, I've got 50p, brilliant. We're talking, you know, the euro billions or whatever. Yeah. He said, would we be doing anything different? And I went, no, we'd just be sat on a bigger sofa in a bigger house crying in a more fancier car and actually yeah. the fundamentals from, from mine and my husband's relationship were also you know we've actually realized with a lot that we actually kind of like each other you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. unlike Ooh. us where I'm like get back to work but that's the thing you know we've, we've that that's the whole point you know we I think in some ways lockdown's given people a lot of insight you know what is what is your life about and actually yeah. you know mate I hate shopping I'm much happier running in the woods and all that a yeah. billion pound and the loss you would do is would probably pay for me to have a fitness coach probably have you every day and <laughs> probably have a home gym so you know what the exactly. life won't change that much yeah but actually would I want to work myself into the ground to achieve that no thank you I'm quite yeah. happy sat in my house with my husband on the yeah. sofa and the crappy van which is you know it's but I'm happy with that it's yeah. it's and I think maybe that's what's come of it but some people need to find out what their why is and what they're happy and I know that you help drag that out of people sometimes yeah. it comes naturally and sometimes we just need guiding in the right way isn't it yeah and I do honestly think that Covid although it's been horrific and people have lost people I think really it's made people just stop and reassess not only their business but their lives as well and I just think do you know what that can't be a bad thing that really can't be a bad thing so Becky just to finish off do you have a top tip and I always like to say a top tip so you could do 10 as far as I'm concerned <laughs> do you have any advice that you've got for somebody either in business who may be struggling or thinking of starting out what what advice would you give them this is a, it doesn't matter whether it's business or personal what I would say is gather all the information for anybody to make an informed decision about anything in their life gather the information make the time to gather all that information so that they've got it clearly in front of them before they make a decision you know so it doesn't matter whether you're thinking about divorcing whether you're thinking about you know going out on your own in business whether you're thinking about changing your life changing your career direction get the information take that time just to gather it all and then you can make a really informed decision I'm not going to say positive because it absolutely doesn't matter if you and that's one thing I've learned if you make a decision it doesn't work out just make another one it's as simple as that and I'm going to interject with something that you taught me oh gosh about 18 months ago no is a full sentence yes (laughs) yes Michelle (laughs) because the amount of times as we do it as women we'll say yeah yeah I can do that and then you go home and think no well you've taught me to say I need to think about that can I check or no and I don't owe them an explanation no, exactly. Oh, anybody an explanation. So those things you've really taught me. Yeah. That if if I am impulsive to go, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it, because that that was one yeah. of my downfalls. Say, so I need to check my diary. Can I come back to you so it gives yeah. me a chance to breathe to know whether I can do this exactly. and whether I want to. Exactly. And it's always easier to go from a no to a yes than a yes to a no. no. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have to explain myself. No, exactly. it's a full sentence. So yes. thank you for that that nugget of information. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> so Becky, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, oh. I'll put all the links in. So if anybody wants to get in touch with you, they can do. And thank Brilliant. you for also coaching me and looking after me. You're a true oh. champion for small business and uh, and people in general. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And thanks for having me. And you're a blessing, I tell you. Thank <laughs> you, Michelle. Take care, Becky. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.